Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cassie. I am a 23 year old content creator new to YouTube and I make beauty, lifestyle, and type one diabetes content. If you've watched some of my other videos, you already know that I've leaned pretty heavily into the beauty and the lifestyle content. I thought what better way to kick off the type one diabetes content than with my diagnosis story. But let's jump into when and how I found out I have type one diabetes and what life has looked like since. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 2009. I was nine years old in fourth grade and I was just a normal kid living her little life. I was a very active child. I played basketball, I danced, I did soccer. I played every sport you could really think of. I just wanted to try it. I loved Barbies, American Girl dolls. Like I just remember loving all of the little girly beauty things that I still love today and also being athletic and dancing and expressing my creativity in that way. So it was late January in 2009 and everybody was getting the flu around that time. I mean, everybody gets sick in the winter and it was pretty typical for me to catch some sort of flu or cold around that time of year. I remember waking up one morning before school and just feeling very out of it, sick, not really with a cough, but I think that's when I started developing a fever and I was extremely extremely thirsty and I was peeing all the time like way more than normal way more than you should even if you're fully hydrated and that was just very unlike me so I remember staying home from school that day just feeling sick and kind of gross but I didn't think too much of it and neither did my parents this was pretty typical this time of year the next morning when I woke up I did not feel any better I actually felt worse and that day I started throwing up and feeling extra gross and so my mom called our family family doctor and they said take her to the hospital since she has a fever she's throwing up that's something that needs to get worked out now obviously this startled my mom like our family doctor telling her to take me to the hospital so we went to the closest hospital near to us and they ran every test and when I say they ran every test they missed one very specific and very important step in testing that would have told them exactly what was wrong right away. If you're a type one diabetic, you probably know what it is, but we'll get into that in the second part of the story. We were in and out of the hospital pretty quickly because they just told me that I had the flu. So we went home, didn't think too much of it. My mom tried to nurse me back to health with home remedies and chicken noodle soup and all of those things. And she was doing a great job of taking care of a sick kid with any other sickness. At this point when I get home, I am drinking water by the gallon jug. I was so, so thirsty and just so lethargic. I remember being so tired, I could barely stay awake. I was dizzy, I was throwing up, I had to pee all the time. I was just not myself at all. At one point my fever broke and so my mom thought I was good enough to go back to school. I felt fine-ish, so I obliged and I went back to school. Remember that morning in school, my teacher looking at me very funny and I didn't think too much of it. I sat with my friends. I was so happy to be back because I could hang out and be a normal nine-year-old again. But a couple hours into the school day, my teacher pulled me out of the classroom and asked me if I was okay because I had been getting up to pee and getting up to drink from the water fountain every five minutes. And she just looked me in the eye and I just remember starting to cry because I was did not feel good, but I was trying to kind of be strong and be brave and I should have been getting better, but I was not. As soon as I started to cry, she got upset too and said, Cassie, I can tell there's something wrong. I, I know there's something wrong. Why don't you just go to the nurse's office? I'll have somebody walk you there. And then, you know, you can stay in there for the rest of the day if you need to. So me and one of my friends walked to the nurse's office and immediately as soon as I opened the door to the nurse's office, the nurse looked at me like I had a triangle for a head. He immediately had me sit down and he called my mom because I was so pale and I honestly looked malnourished. Nurse called my mom to come pick me up and as soon as I got in the car, I know her mommy instinct kicked in because she immediately rushed me over to the pediatric hospital in Columbus. And immediately upon arrival to the emergency room where we checked in, they knew what was going on. The one test that the other hospital missed was checking my blood sugar. They did not test my blood sugar and that was the key to finding out that my blood sugar was upwards of 500. I cannot remember the exact number, and I know there's a lot of diagnosis stories where people are 800, 900 higher than that, but obviously a blood sugar of 500 is still extremely dangerous. I knew by the way the nurse's eyes 
opened when she checked my blood sugar that something was very wrong. Right after they tested my blood sugar and the nurse saw the number, she didn't tell us immediately. She had us go to a different room and I remember sitting in that room for what felt like forever. One of the doctors at the hospital came in and said that I have type 1 diabetes and I just remember my mom crying and then I started to cry because I was very scared and it was just a very, very emotional and scary moment. At that time, I really only felt scared because my mom was scared, but now looking back and as an adult, I understand that feeling that she was having. I'm not a mother, but I just know that watching a child go through something like that is extremely scary, and I am so, so grateful for my mom for taking me to the hospital again and not just heeding the advice of the original hospital who told me that I just had the flu. This is a really important part of the story because had we just ignored all of my symptoms and I kept going back to school, it could have been deadly. When we told the children's hospital that I had been misdiagnosed at the previous hospital, they were honestly livid. Please, if you take nothing else from this video, please, please take the advice. You think there's something wrong, you know your body best and you better take your somewhere else to get the treatment that you deserve. Getting a second opinion should never be frowned upon. It should actually be encouraged. And if you're a parent, please, please, please advocate for your children and their health as well. Having my mom and my entire family's support, my school teacher and my nurse's support were all extremely important. Really, I was exhibiting all of the classic signs of type one. Excessive thirst, very lethargic, very fatigued, not being able to keep food down, losing weight had we been able to test my blood sugar obviously extremely high blood sugar as soon as the children's hospital could admit me to a room they did and that's where the chaos started happening i had ivs galore because they needed to lower my blood sugar as fast as they could they wanted to put saline in my body to flush out my blood they were weighing me they were pricking my finger all the time it felt extremely overwhelming as a nine-year-old kid to be hooked up to so many machines but i know that's what was keeping me alive so luckily the nurses and the care staff at the second hospital were absolutely amazing they trained me day in and day out on how to give shots, how to prick my finger and check my blood sugar, how to treat a low, how to correct a high, and just everything under the sun. It was a literal crash course on how to have type 1 diabetes. It wouldn't be a diagnosis story without an embarrassing part, so my favorite part of this whole story that I actually do tell people pretty often is that A Little Bit Longer by Nick Jonas had recently come out and I just remember asking my mom to play it over and over again. I was really sad that I was going home with a new disease, but I was happy that I was one step closer to being Nick Jonas. Even though they gave me all of the tools that I could have needed to go about my day and live with type 1 diabetes, it was still a huge adjustment coming out of the hospital. That was honestly the scariest part was going home and having to live with type 1 diabetes every day. Coming home was definitely an adjustment, but my support system my family was absolutely amazing during this time. The thing about type 1 diabetes is that it does not just affect the person, but it affects everybody around them. My parents had to learn how to parent me as a child with type 1 diabetes. My sisters had to learn how to support me as sisters of a child with type 1 diabetes. And my friends had to learn how to be a friend to somebody with type 1 diabetes. As the days went on, I learned more and more about myself, in the way I need to take insulin, when I need to take my insulin, and all of the things of that nature. And all of this goes to say that diabetes is really a day-by-day -day disease. You have to take things day-by-day, -day, learning about yourself, your habits, your needs, and for everybody it is different. You clicked on this video because you or someone you know or love was just diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Just know that you or them are going to be okay. I'm 23 years old. I've had type 1 diabetes for 14 years. I live alone in New York City. I have a job. I have friends. I go out. I travel. I have a boyfriend. It, you will live a completely normal life with type 1. But it's super, super, super important that you advocate for yourself and your health. That really goes for any disease, but especially type 1. As I've gotten older, I've realized how important it is to let the people around you know that you have type 1. If you were to ever be in a life-threatening situation, you would want the people around you to know so they know how to properly take care of you. I just read a statistic that 
people with type 1 diabetes make on average 118 more decisions than people without type 1 diabetes in a day which is absolutely crazy so i just like to think that people with type 1 diabetes are a little bit more decisive than those without but seriously type 1 teaches you so much about discipline about creating habits and about advocating for yourself and your health sharing this story is very important to me because with more awareness comes more technology more research more funding to find a cure for type 1. If you know somebody with type 1 diabetes, please be a champion for them and help them advocate for better research, better funding, and better technology. Coming up, I want to do a diabetes Q&A so that you guys can ask questions and I can answer them. So I would love if you drop them in the comments below or you can DM them to me directly on Instagram. I will also likely be posting a story soon, so stay on the lookout. Um, and you can drop in questions that you have about the disease. In the meantime, if you'd like to support those of us with type 1 diabetes in the diabetes community as a whole, please find more information in the description box about JDRF, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. My family has been involved with JDRF for years now, and they have been such a light in the community in advancing type 1 diabetes technology and research. There's a link down below on how to donate to JDRF and also just find more information. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and supporting me. The best way to support me on YouTube is by liking, commenting, and subscribing to this channel. And don't forget to turn the notification bell on to be notified when I post a new video. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye. Testing, testing. I hope my hair looks okay. I hope I don't get emotional during this. I don't tell this story very often. Typed one. That made no sense. That made absolutely no sense. Why do I always dance before videos?